Over. This is very exciting. I've wanted to do this for years, to do an edition of our Overtime just for the foreign audience. I must say there's something personal in it. I am actually going to be touring in Europe next year. I'm going to be playing London, Amsterdam, Oslo, and Stockholm. Oh. So, uh, so, and this is a great panel for that. Uh, General, you are familiar with cultures. You bombed many of them. <laughs> <laughs> So these are just stories. <laughs> you will bomb in many of them. It's very good. You know, you are right. I may bomb over there. It's true. I've never done this before. I'm nervous as hell. But you know what? I want to do it before I'm dead. OK. Um, so here are some stories. There was a front page story in the New York Times this week on the uh, resurgence of anti-Semitism in Europe. Oh, yes. Why does this issue keep coming up? That's, yeah, it was. Very disturbing to read that, that in so many capitals in Europe, uh, I read that, you know, people are standing in front of synagogues and saying death to the Jews. I mean, this is the continent that fought a war to stop Hitler 70 years ago. Well, two reasons. One, there are a lot of Muslims there, especially in France and in Germany. Uh, so that's one problem. And then you also have that small minority of Europeans in France and Germany who have never gone away, who are still very uh, racist and anti-Semitic. That's a problem. There's still a problem with the neo-Nazis, too. I mean, right. it, it, and uh, I was just in uh, sure. Berlin, and uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, things that Hitler had built that they're trying to either tear down or uh, disguise with gardens because the neo Nazis now are holding them up as shrines. Uh, so I don't think that ever totally left. It certainly isn't a majority. But there is a rise in that now. It's, it's troublesome. It is troublesome. Okay. Uh, Rabbi Cash Money asked the panel. Uh, <laughs> I think this is from <laughs> Australia. I often hear that the USA is great because of, quote, our freedom. What freedoms do you have that other countries, for example, Australia, doesn't? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear that often. And, uh, and why don't they get bombed as much for them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, Marco Rubio used to say in his, in his uh, stump speech, he used to have this line about how this is the only country in the world, America, where an idea that started out on a cocktail napkin could wind up being traded on the stock exchange. And I was like, no. <laughs> Other countries have napkins and <laughs> stock exchanges. What, the, what world are they living in? But it is a good question. I mean, we, we do that often in this country, especially on the right talk only in America, and it's really not only in America. I, I mean, we do have maybe more freedom on some issues. I do know Europeans who have come to this country because they find the economics over there too stifling. That is right. true. Right. And Australia is I've much, much freer than the United States in many ways, but we are the one country, the one in indispensable country right now that protects freedom around the globe. And I think that that's, yeah, you can make the case that Australia, they're probably freer, but we're the ones that defend their freedom. So we're, we're the saying, cops. We're the cops. You're saying, <laughs> if not the cops, the bouncers. Uh, so you're saying Australia is freer than oh, us? Oh, Australia's a great country. I love it. Oh, yes. <laughs> you should go tour there. You are going to get into so much trouble when you get back to Washington. <laughs> no, it's a great country. It's a great country. Really? Oh, yeah. There's a country freer than us, and you love it? I, I think we're... <laughs> Ooh, I wouldn't want to be at your Bible meeting on the <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 This is from Frankfurt, Germany. What habit or way of life from any foreign country do you believe your fellow citizens should adopt and could benefit from? Well, I'll answer that first, because when we left for vacation uh, on August 1st, I said, I was applauding the fact that Europeans take all, all of August off. I think Americans have too little vacation time. They're too stressed out. And they, they put way too much emphasis on material goods as opposed to enjoying life. In addition, I think we could have smarter gun policies. I think that it's just ridiculous what we're, right. what we're doing. And, and it's not even the fact that I don't think that people should have guns. I grew up in Louisiana. It's a gun culture. We hunted all the time. People had guns around that. I don't, I don't see there's anything wrong with that. 
but the, pro the actual proliferation of so many guns to the point where you now have almost a gun per person in this country. Well, the, and, and guns outlive their owners if you take care of them. So me, it's not like they're going to uh, evaporate or go away or, or, or stop being functional, and they're just going to keep being more and more guns. And at a certain point, well, that's the problem. Let me, let me if take it's issue with what you said. Yeah. Because you said, you know, we have to hunt. This is the problem. You know, the Democrats basically love guns, not quite as much as Republicans, but they, they basically say, well, we can all agree that murdering animals is something we absolutely have to do. <laughs> and, you know, when you're into shooting living things... Well, I mean, I, th it's, I, mean, it's I, a slippery I think you can take that position. I think that... but. I, and you get joy out of doing no, that. No, that's no there joy. Is it's, not, it's not about wrong joy, it's not, it's, but it is. It, it, it's you, not. It's, it's a sport. That's what they always say. Well, it's sport. I'm not talking about. We sport need shooting. guns for sport. I'm not talking about sports shooting. Is it really I'm, a sport for the animal? I'm literally talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think is there, it a sport if you don't know a game is on? <laughs> And you don't have the same equipment. I, I don't think it's really a sport. I thought I he think, was I think, a liberal I, on the I, panel. I think, <laughs> what's happening? I think <laughs> that's ur, the problem. Urban liberal. liberals and 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 rural liberals, and particularly the ones who live in the South, we ha we have different kind of concepts of, of on this on this subject. And I think that right. I live in New York City. I don't see why anybody should have a gun in New York City. I personally, there are cops everywhere, and I can you know pick up nine one one and somebody be at my door in five seconds. When you live really? out in the middle, yes. I, I live in one of those neighborhoods. Oh, wow. So, uh, <laughs> uh, wow. Good for but, you. But, um, but if you live where I grew up, there are no right. cops. There are right. literally no cops. And if you call the cop, they would, they would be there 30 seconds from now. And what do you do in that, in that intervening time? Wow. So I think that there is a difference uh, okay. that is regional. This is from Slovenia. How much danger or how many deaths should free nations absorb to protect civil liberties. <laughs> I love this. First of all, this is, a, this is a very good question, but it's phrased in a way we would never say it in America. And it's true. There is a certain amount of deaths that we would have to absorb to protect it. How many deaths should free nations absorb to protect civil liberties? It's, it's real. You can't have absolute on both. Wow. <laughs> Do you want to, do you want to Slovenia, you have stumped the panel. You, <laughs> you, you, you win a dinner at Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bill, I think it's a great question, and I think it's a question that goes to balance, and how do we balance our liberties with our freedoms against uh, threats of terror? And, you know, sometimes we go way too overboard, which we've done in our history periodically, and then we go the other way, and, you know, it's a balance. No, we've got to find we, that balance. We've just seen the deaths of two journalists from the United States. I mean, that represents freedom of speech, freedom of the press. They were out there doing their jobs. And I think as you saw each beheading, wow. you saw the American support for taking action grow. Even though they were in numbers, it was obviously But that's, that's exactly right. Two people who purposely went there, they purposely swam in the crocodile pool <laughs> and got eaten by crocodiles. <laughs> Should we then spend, I don't know how much money, 10 million, 10 billion, 10 trillion dollars to, to revenge that. It well, just seems like perhaps it's not a good balance. But these were journalists. I don't think they were out there to, to, to find a way to make money. I mean, they were they seeking weren't. truth. I mean, they were... They, I agree. Yeah. But they were seeking the truth in a place that they knew was the most dangerous place in the world. Does that mean we have an obligation, then, to spend unlimited amounts of blood what's and... The, what's the life of an American worth? Well, well... well I mean, that's an, almost something, uh, but not everything. Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, worth everything? Well, you know, it, we have to just go to DEFCON 5 anytime an American gets killed under any circumstances, anywhere? No, no just, but I think we, we protect, you know, I think it's part of our obligation to protect American lives, wherever they may be, our own well being, uh, the uh, uh, existential threats that may be to our nation. But an American life ought to be precious to us. But, 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 but we right, operate on different horizons. Die every, so people right. die every single day in Harlem. Right. Yeah. I don't know why we care so... I mean... I'm, I agree. I and agree. You have to... That's I mean, always have to be life. I mean, let's face it. The shoe bomber won. Right. Because every time we go to the airport... Maybe right. you, you get to fly private. But right. the rest of us have to take our shoes off every single time we go through the airport. So every time you know, I go through well, the airport, I think, he won. Right. And, 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 and our horizons are different, right? Which is, we want vengeance now. We want it to be over quick. But their horizon is a decade, 
a century. And like they're not playing on our like quick you bomb me now and you and right. you win tomorrow and it's going to be over and I'm going to let it go and it's going to be done. That's not how they're playing this game. And I and have flown private. I don't get to fly private. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill, let me let me you, let me let me say something real quick. You had a wonderful soliloquy about the evils of Islam, about the the, the worst parts of it. You know, if you're going to stop some of the worst elements of that, you can't just you play by the Marcus of Queensbury rules. You have to you have to fight them where you, and fight them hard. And I think that the idea that we can just lay down and not fight ISIS is very naive and exactly against what you were saying in your speech. And we got to stop them. What does well, fight them hard mean to you? No. It means st bomb them when they are making these uh, uh, advancements and creating safe havens. So we can win it from the air is what you're saying. Yeah, I don't want boots on the ground. I think I think we can contain this threat. <laughs> But, but we have well, it has uh, not ever okay. worked. Uh, that, ever. I mean, that, we yeah. may not have yeah. boots, but we have like intel military intelligence on we have this is just a hoax when we say there's no boots on the ground. There are American military intelligence on the ground there. Okay, so I have time for one with this fake boots on one the ground. more. Mark von Werkheim asked the panel, why has the NSA scandal not led to any change anywhere? Regards from Munich. <laughs> 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 what? Well, it's funny it's from Munich because you know I always think Americans know one lesson from history: Munich. Everybody we hate is Hitler, and any time we don't completely throw down at full force against everybody who looks at us the wrong way, we are appeasers who are replaying Munich with Hitler. But uh, well, I, don't, I don't think we're listening in on Merkel's uh, phone calls anymore, so that's probably a one change. <laughs> Maybe not. But <laughs> why were we ever? Lucky her. <laughs> right, lucky her. <laughs> no, but I think he means here at home. You know, why hasn't the uh, NSA scandal led to any change? But I, yeah, I don't know if that's true because uh, certainly the releases from Snowden uh, prompted the uh, Congress here in America right. to take up this issue in a way they never have before. And you saw some pretty strange bedfellows in Congress who were allied on the idea yeah. that you know what, maybe we don't have to spy on Americans to that degree. And to keep the data forever. And, and to, to provide oversight. For, right. But, you know, to get back to your question, I don't think bombing is what has stopped America from being attacked again. I think it's more what the NSA is doing, what oh, law I enforcement is doing. I think that's right. What spy is I think it's all of it. I think, right. I think, I think it's I think all part of it. I think the bombing creates terrorists that these other agencies then have to stop. Uh, not always. I don't know. No. Okay. Thank you very much, Overseas Edition. I'll see you in May 2015. <laughs>